go ahead and roll insight. Howdy folks, I'm Dabas Volt, and welcome to Rolling Insight, the Dungeons and Dragons series where I give you some insight on topics for the world's greatest role-playing game. This week, I have a confession to make. I had the audio for this episode all ready to go about a week before midterms hit. I had the script done, I recorded the voiceover, and I even had it edited down with background music and sound effects the whole nine yards. So then, what gives? Why am I releasing this video now instead of three weeks ago? Well, visuals still had to be done, which can take exponentially longer. And also, I realized as I was listening back to myself explaining the nitty gritty of combat rules for D&D 5th edition, I got bored. I thought to myself, if I'm bored with my own script, I can't imagine how others will react to this. With that, I scrapped the old voiceover and now I'm remaking it to be far more engaging and fun to follow. Thanks to Lady Darkwind, my IRL DM, for suggesting this change to the script. Also, I won't be going over everything to do with combat, because then I'd end up with the script that I had to scrap so I could scrape this crap into a bit I could rap to teach you kids how to go bap. I'm never doing that again. So. The way this is going to work is I'm going to play out a combat encounter. While the encounter is happening, I'll have cards flash up in the background like this, explaining the concept further so you can pause and read if you get confused or want to know more. All of these cards come from the basic rules officially posted by Wizards of the Coast for free. There will be a link in the description that will take you to these rules. Don't worry, you don't need an account to access them, it's totally surface web available. Oh, also, YouTube keeps telling me to say things for engagement so while you're clicking links go ahead and like and subscribe if you're enjoying so far put a comment to show you're really enjoying the video and listen i wouldn't normally ask for this kind of thing but i need to fill this engagement tank over here in order for the algorithm to deem my video worthy of being shotgun blasted across people's photoreceptors so if you wouldn't mind do the engagement dance it helps out the video and tells me what y'all enjoy seeing so i can continue to refine and produce better content anyways here we go your party of three trails through the woods, navigating the beaten paths on your way to Questville. During your travels, rustling in the bushes can be heard as a band of goblins jump out to attack your party. Roll initiative! The fighter, being a dexterous combatant and never backing down from a fight, takes the first chance and rushes into combat, drawing the sword from their side. They slash at the first goblin bandit. A solid blow lands on the goblin, slicing from hip to shoulder, exposing the inner grotesque workings of the small green monster. The archer knocks an arrow, but the sunshine between the leaves plants itself firmly in their eyes, forcing a miss from their bow shot. The goblin ranger, seeing this advantage, takes aim next and lands their shot in the archer's shoulder. The wizard, seeing the archer take a hit and the fighter being preoccupied with two goblins at once, decides to strike out. An incantation mixed with precise hand gestures summons three bolts of force from the weave, all of them hitting their marks on the goblin raiders. Solid damage, nothing lethal, but purchasing valuable time. Finally, the fighter uses this chance, a lapse in the goblin's defense, to take a swipe at each, easily dispatched with the help of the wizard's magic. The archer, forcing the arrow through their shoulder wound, knocks the same arrow and returns it to sender, dealing the final blow with an arrow between the eyes. Goblins dispatched, the party assesses their wounds and dresses them appropriately as they continue their travels to Questville in search of greater deeds. Okay, so, combat in D&D usually lasts a lot longer than a minute or two. In fact, that's the average time it takes a player in DM to describe their attack, roll to hit, determine if the roll meets or beats the AC, and roll damage upon confirmation of success. And that's just for one action! Some combatants can take multiple actions or even do combat things with bonus actions and reactions. Some people speed it up by rolling damage alongside the roll to hit, which is nice, but it's also a bummer watching your d20 roll a 1 and your damage dice rolling max. But it's up to you what you want to do. On the subject of speeding up combat, however, there are common things to practice during encounters for both players and DMs alike to make combat more of this, and a lot less of this. Three numbers you need to tell where something is, you're going 
breadth, width, and height. For players, I recommend having something I call an FTP, or first turn plan. This isn't something you need to disclose, but it does help when you're unexpectedly the first in initiative against an enemy. An FTP, as the name implies, is an action or set of actions you take on your first turn either against an enemy or to help out the party. This doesn't need to be a heavy hit and it doesn't need to do all the bells and whistles for your party, but it's just something you can throw out without thinking to give yourself time to strategize for the encounter. Similar to this is just thinking about what you're gonna do on other people's turns. People like to watch others do cool things during combat, because cool things are cool to watch. I know, crazy, right? But when it comes time for that person to do the thing, they have no idea what things they wanna do. Figuring out your turn before your turn comes around helps speed up combat and gives everyone a sense of urgency to figure their actions out before their time in the spotlight. I'm looking at you, spellcaster mains. Figure out your spells before your turn. If you can't figure it out, Throw an FTP and figure it out next round. For DMs, there's three main tips I can give. Tip one is calculating initiatives within a range, like how Matt Mercer does it. All right, all right, I know it's not his method. I'm sure he got it from somewhere, but he is the most popular example, so he's the one I'm using cry about it. Literally, just ask who rolled between two numbers and jot them down in order. Tip two, you can cut the rolls you do in half by only rolling to hit. Every NPC stat block comes with these average damage outputs you can throw out instead of rolling and doing additional math. I would only do this for small encounters, ones your players are meant to just slog through with reckless abandon. And of course, you can adjust the number above or below what it actually is, depending on how much you want to soften up your party before they get to your BBEG. In short, save your player killers for lieutenants and big bads. Tip three is having your party stats on your screen for your reference. This applies to armor classes, saving throws, and resistances as well. This way, you don't have to ask your players if a 24 hits. Instead, you can just know it will because your party is level three and you're throwing a challenge rating seven monster at them. You f***ing asshole. This way, you can just tell your players, yep, that 17 is gonna hit Melvin for a total of three fire damage reduced from seven because they're wearing the necklace of fire resistance. Also, just cause I feel like it, here's a bonus tip for you. Implementing tip number three, makes you sound more confident. Instead of always asking your players for their character's information, you're telling them something hits or misses, placing yourself in their minds as an ultimate authority rather than Mike who runs our games on Saturdays, speeding up combat while winning the psychological battle. DMing. It's really just psyops. Dabbas, this is great and all, which sounds kind of pretentious in a meta way because I'm talking to myself, but this is combat built for efficiency. It's nice when combat moves fast so people don't get bored as fast and, you know, the session doesn't grind to a halt, but what about describing your moves for narrative? What about immersing your players by having them act out what their characters do? Well, strangely meta-aware hypothetical me. That's a good point. To which I say, it's up to your players if they want to describe how they thrust their daggers into the forearms of their opponent, or how they wrap the copper wire around their finger to cast a message spell. I I it's it's not around your finger? Then what are you- uh, Oh no, what the f- <coughs> Come on, I said no ERP, damn it! You shouldn't force RP onto your players, because as I've said before, it's gross. If you want to play out your combat actions, do so. But be aware, your players care a hell of a lot more about their characters and the cool things they do than anything your goblins and kobolds and gnolls oh could possibly do. Save the real heavy descriptions and narrative for big targets. And that about sums it up. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the notification bell for updates too. I post these every Monday, so be sure to tune back in for more videos. If you want to see something covered, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you next time we roll insight. Have a good one.